Hello and welcome back to New Week, New Game. This is where I play a new game that I've never played before, whether it be from Steam Library or like last week, PlayStation 4. It could be from a console, a different game launcher aside from Steam, but for the most part, it's, it's from Steam, which is what today's is also. It's from Steam. <laughs> Today I am bringing you Game Dev Studio. This is a game that I picked up through Fanatical. I'm sure it was a part of a bundle or a random bit of bundle. I like simulation games. And we played a game that was like a game developing studio simulator. I didn't really enjoy it all that much. But I also only play about 30 minutes of the game. And I feel that doesn't really give enough time to explore the game, especially simulation games, because there's a lot to explore because there's like mid and late game content that we get. We get early game content and make a decision from there on whether or not we're continuing to play or not. Uh, with Game Dev Studio, just to read the description here in the store page, it says, Welcome to your own Game Dev Studio. How will you run your own offices and ascend to greatness in the game industry? It's got tags of simulation, casual, strategy, indie, and economy. It's got a very positive review, so I'm looking forward to trying this game out. So, without further ado... Let's get in the game. Let's start a new game. Uh, I definitely feel like we should go through the tutorial, but there's a randomization bundle here. Enable randomization to increase replayability value. Recommended to those who have already played the base game and are looking for more variety in gameplay. And then there's scenario back in the game. There's the introduction recommended for new players. The go-to game type for new players after completing the tutorial. So it does recommend that you do go through and do the tutorial sections. Start out with $100,000 in a tiny office with your own player character that learns everything three times as fast. And slowly make your way to the top. You will need to follow the investor's instructions with some of the tasks being on a time limit. Uh, let's go, I guess we'll do a tutorial. Start with construction, employees, projects. Uh, and then if we have time, getting into introduction. I have no idea how long these tutorials will last. So, we'll see. It's on very easy. That's fine. I recommend it for new players. The go-to game type for new players. Get acquainted with the office construction mode of the game. So let's start our game. Uh, can we do a random or is this? Yeah, just... Randomized appearance is fine. There we go. All of this is, is great. Confirm and start. Oh, wait, do I have to... Can we randomize that too? No? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Ba -ba -ba -ba. There you go. Everything's four. We're just a very well-rounded character. Enter the studio name. Oh man. How can we beat the likes of studio names like Rockstar or Bethesda or EA? How about we just call ourselves... Uh, There we go. T we're T Me Studios. Are you sure you want to use this company name? You won't be able to change the name of your company later. That's fine. Welcome to T Me. Welcome! This tutorial will teach you the basics of construction and filling out of empty office space you might have. Alright. Thank you, the investor. An office with no workplace is just empty. Useless space. Let's start changing that. I got it. In conversation. Property investment expand the office. First, 
let's place a couple of workplaces. Since we don't want world-class developers sitting on the floor with notepads in their hands, doodling something. That's exactly what I want, though. I got it. In the conversation. Bam, let's go here, workplace. So we just place it someplace. Let's do it. Let's put it in the center. Um, unusable. Why are they unusable? How many am I supposed to put? Seven valid workplaces. What, are they not? I don't get it. Need to insert edit. Does it say why? Workplace requires a light level of 200 lumen. Okay, well that's fine. No, do like that. Uh, ba 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 da da ba ba ba. So something like this. This kind of light level. You want over here a light level? Nope, that doesn't work either. Um, let's see. How do I get lights? There wait just to delete that. General Lamp. You might think just workplaces are enough, but that's not the case. Game developers are regular people with needs like every person. Every other person. So let's take care of that now. Got it. Sanitary. Um, does it say specifically what all we need? Get that sink going. Get that toilet. Get that paper holder. And then get the light. Great. There's only one thing your office is missing now. A water dispenser. All right. Food. Water dispenser. Right there. The old watering hole. Great. Your office is now set up with all the prerequisites. Offices can also be outfitted with kitchens and various objects related to comfort so that your employees run out of drive slower and stay in office for longer. Some offices can be expanded, and in some cases you'll need to expand an existing building for a couple more workplaces. This is a cheaper than buying a new building and will give you the much needed office space. I got it. Is that what you want me to do now? Is you want me to expand? Expand the office. You want to explain to me how to do that? I just pick these brick walls. Just tap to expand. There we go. Okay, we're gonna do it a couple times, I guess. There we go. Expansion is one thing, but an entire new office is a completely different thing. A new building will cost a lot more than just expanding your existing one, but you'll get a ton of extra space that way. You want me to buy this office? Yep. There we go. 
that's all I wanted to show to you. With these basics in mind, the rest is up to you. You'll need to position things in your office in the most efficient way possible to allow for as many workplaces as possible. All right. By the way, aside from expanding every office, can have multiple floors. Purchasing a new floor gives you as much extra space as an entirely new office, while costing much less to purchase. Buy some extra floors if you wish. Sure. We go into expanding mode. Office 2 sounds like a great name. Alright. It's person, people out here. Expansion mode. Right. With a decent looking office, it's time you looked into hiring employees. Do I not get to put a second floor on? You'll need to hire people from a variety of professions, as game developers are not miracle workers, and each has their own specialty they're best at. Go ahead and hire one of each. Got it. Employees. Hire employees. So we have a jack of all trades, a writer, a manager, a designer, an artist. Just gonna go through and hire everybody. So I guess we just won't have a software engineer, but we do have a jack of all trades. All right, never mind. you would have me make enough desks to accommodate everybody <clears throat> they gave me seven and told me to hire eight people <clears throat> made one extra one by mistake it's like a bite of something so I'm just gonna move on there Ask, uh, Avian has refused your job offer for Jack of all trades position. Oh, well, fuck that guy. Emmy <clears throat> Koshkin has accepted your job offer for a writer position and is now available in office starting today. Well, Burton Henry has accepted your job offer for a manager position is now available in the office. Jerry Nimin has accepted your job offer for a designer position is now available. <clears throat> Yari Kendakani has accepted your job offer for an artist position. Pavo Kajesto has accepted your job offer for a sound engineer. And Kirill Ayonovich has accepted your job offer for a software engineer. Great. More people means work on projects will be finished faster. As you develop will split up the task between each other always keep your finances in mind when hiring new people employees need to be paid and they will start leaving to work elsewhere in case you can't afford their salaries with that said your employees are regular people just like yourself who said I'm regular they often have their own interests which provides them with the knowledge related to it this knowledge can then be used to make better games Aside from that, every employee has attributes and skills. Every role apart from you has its main skill. This main skill increases much faster than all the others since this is something they specialize in. Click on an employee in the game world and open their employee info menu to see more. Here's my employees. Employee info. There we go. Level 2, Rider. Pretty high skills level. 
for uh for rider that's pretty that's good pretty good we don't know what their traits are this trait's not known yet what's their traits likes to dress up in a furry costume Ooh, no wonder they're so good at rider and now we finally get to the next to the meat and bone of the industry game development First, you'll need to acquire a game engine, which means either making one or purchasing one. Got it. You can make your own game engine? Alright. So what engines do we need? New engine. We got projection, which is 2D projection, and audio playback. I just, like, pick something? You have to select a team before picking features. Hmm. I'm gonna eat this last thing I have. It has it all. The Garf engine. Hit play, like what's going on here? I really don't need a jack of all trades. With an engine in stock, you can get to work on a game. There are many variables that affect the success of your game, but selecting every single feature under the sun is not one of them. Selecting a lot of features for your game is necessary only for a game that is sold for a high price. You got it. All right, let's go here. Let's do a new game. Uh, we gotta enter the game name. What kind of game do we want? We want perspective, story, dialogue, world design, gameplay, graphics, audio. Um, this will call, be called uh, Fun Town Clown Hill. Perfect name for a game. Fun, fun, fun town. Cloud killer. Select a theme. It's it's fantasy. Select a genre. It is a action game. Uh, the engine. We're gonna use the Garf engine. Select our price. Well, this is gonna be a thirty dollar game. Our audience is mature. Platform. It's for the PC. Our team is our studio. Uh, it's a full game. Game project scale, one text, small scale project. Uh, the perspective is going to be a... Let's do a top down. Linear story, branching story. Um, Let's do a linear story. With multiple endings. End up backstory? No. Dialogue, conversation system, partially voiced characters. Uh, let's do a partially voiced. This is just our little indie game. It's something small that we're starting. It's not going to be full scale just yet. Basic world design. Yeah, as basic as you can get it. Uh, gameplay, of course, you can save. Select difficulty, tips and hints. Yep. Accurate gun mechanics. Nope. Freedom of movement. Yes. Accurate martial arts. Nope. Oh, accurate gun mechanics we should do. Um... Stealth and sneaking, no. Accurate sword fighting, uh, uh, thirst and hunger, no. Graphics, let's do some stylized graphics. Um, I would like a chiptune soundtrack. That would be very lovely. And anti-piracy measures, of course. We're gonna have anti-piracy measures. Uh, cannot begin on work. No voiceover type selected. Oh. Uh, amateur voice acting or conversation system of amateur voice acting. 
God, gotta love them amateurs. Begin the development. The game development process is split up into three stages. Concept and design, development and polishing. The first two stages are mandatory and polishing can be skipped entirely if you wish. That's what a lot of major game companies seem to do. In most cases, however, skipping the polishing stage is like signing a death warrant for the success of your game. Hear that, developers? Death warrant. Uh, rough gameplay and countless bugs will do your sales no good. I got it. Uh, let's play. Let's develop that. Uh, let's get it. Let's get it done. Look at them work. Majestic, right? Got just Kirill, our software engineer, just hanging out over there in a crowded room, <laughs> idling with no task. Also idling, also idling. Oh, it's me, the CEO. My task is God Mechanics. Hey, we gave him a task, tips and hints. Get some water. I am. Um, I'm, I'm worried about Krill, to be honest here. He, he it says that he's in a crowded room. I feel like it's not crowded. Maybe it's because I like set up his desk in the corner away from everybody. He feels crowded because he's just got like this little work environment. Now that the game has entered the polishing stage, you might want to look into quality assurance QA for your game or test it yourself. Quality assurance will play test the game and find issues while you're still working on it. Testing the game on your own will require employees to do. Is it redirect their efforts to do redirect their efforts to that instead of working on the game, which means time lost or on things that could have been spent working on the game itself. So, I guess we just choose QA. Hey boss, our Funtown Clown Killer game project is now ready to be released. It's Krill, you guys. That's what Kirill looks like. We're currently polishing it, but this is optional and we could release it as is if we want to. All right, thank you for the info, Kirill. Uh, begin QA. Quality assurance. The session will last one week. It will cost 10k. The team in charge of testing will attempt to find issues every day, and you will get a report on how many issues were found each day. It's 10k a week. Bam. Let's see what we got. Quality assurance. Quality Assurance Firm, you hired to perform testing on your Funtown Clown Killer project has finished their work. Here are their findings. Multiple issues, PO issues, P1 issues, P2 issues, uh, remaining unfixed issues, five P2 issues. Get those P2 issues out of here. Get them out of here. All right. It's still the polishing step. This is still people fixing things. It said that we don't have any issues. Mega Origin Release. Mega has released their new Origin game console. Cool. Good for Mega. Almost done. There we go. The game's finished. At this point, you can either release it as is or extend the work period and let your employees further polish and improve it. Got it. Let's release the game. Let's bring it out to the world. Wilburn, what do you got for me? Hey, boss. Are you sure you want to release Fun Town Clown Killer? Priced as it is. 
If you ask me, it's priced too high for its scale. If you ever need help in regard to settling a good price for a game, be sure to consult with me or any manager in the office first. We can do research on this topic and get back to you on a price we think will be most fair for any game we make. In that case, find out what the best price is for Funtown Clown Killer and report back to me when you're done. All right, I'll get on it right away. Anything else? Uh, you're fired. <laughs> Just kidding. Jeez. Will burn. You're, you got this guy. You're good. Uh, there we go. All right. Let's keep moving. Doing the price research, taking their time. What are you to come back with me? You come back with me and tell me that I had it priced right the correct time, though, Wilburn? <laughs> Fired. Hey, boss. I'm done with my research on what the best price for Fun Town Clown Killer is. Judging by the current trends and on market platforms, a game with a scale factor of X1 is best suited with a price of $9.99. Thanks for that info. No problem. Is there anything else you'd like me to do? Uh, we'll talk later. Alright, uh... Can I not release the game? Or... That's not what I want to do. Jerry? Hey bossy, you got a minute? What's up? I've asked folks around the office and we thought it would be cool if we went to visit a martial arts dojo. What do you think? Uh, sure, I'll make it on the house, pay 60. Great, thanks. Makes them happy because they want to go to a martial arts dojo. Activity verdict. Practice martial arts with co-workers is mildly entertaining. The average drive gain was four points. Player characters. Player character, seven point. That's me, player character. Will and so on and so forth. Okay, so four of us went and had a good time. Gotcha. Uh, pause it real quick, though. Where? Release. I want to release our game. Where's our game? Project. It says it's finished, but... Let's game conventions. I don't want to do that. I'm pretty sure it's in projects. Bam. Uh, project info. We're going to change the price. We should change the price. Should change the price. How do I change the price? Is there a way to do that? Uh huh. Uh huh. Change price. There it is. Recommended was nine ninety nine. All right, we're finished. We're we're finished. We can we can hit play. We can go here. We can hit finished. We can. Now release the game. Release the game! The game's released and your job here is done. How do you know whether the game is bad or not? The reviews, of course. They'll pile up over time and give you an insight on the good and bad. So be sure to read them. Got it. IGM has published a review. They got. I want to read the reviews, damn you. Game edition response. Fans of Fun Town Clear Killer. <laughs> ah. Have reached to its editions. You've gained zero reputation. You've gained zero opinion. Players said one out of one of game editions had good value. I want to read these reviews, though. Uh, we had a big loss in this one. <laughs> Project info. Can we see the reviews? Can I? Can I see some reviews? Here we are. IGM gave it a 5.5 out of 10. Games Bomb gave it a 4.9 out of 10. Legit Reviews gave it a 5.3 out of 10, but I don't really trust the reviews. I feel like they're bot. Uh, Gaming Nexus also gave it a 5.5 out of 10. We're, we're about a 50%. Oh boy. Oh 
Oh boy, it's a big loss too. Uh, let's keep going. Yeah, it could have been better. So now what? What are the objectives? Uh, read a review of your game. Did I just pick one? There you go. Read review. Hey. All right. Review. Fun Town Clown Killer was average. The visuals were superb. We think action games work just okay on the PC. The chosen target audience did not hinder the game in terms of creative freedom. The performance was great. As unfortunate as it is, T Me's latest game can be considered average. Dialogue 32%, story 36, gameplay 57%, graphics 79%, world design 76, sound 64%. Platform genre match discovered. Oh, a new plat new new genre. Discovered role of graphics in action genre games. Audience genre match discovered. Cool. That's just a tiny glimpse into what your game did right and wrong. Reading more reviews will give you the bigger picture. And armed with that knowledge, you'll be able to make better games. A good genre theme match will boost the sales of your game and make it more appealing to the reviewers. But it alone is not enough to make a good game. The most important part to make a good game is having experienced developers. Well, that's all I wanted to explain to you. With this knowledge in mind, it's time for you to try your hand at an actual challenge. You got it. Hey, we finished the tutorial. At least I thought just one side of the tutorial. Did it just keep going after that? Uh, play through stats. Congratulations, you finished the tutorial. With an understanding of the basics in mind, your next suggested step is to try the introduction scenario. <laughs> money earned, money spent. We spent so much money on this thing. Close. Uh, so there we go. Let's go ahead and just go back to the menu. No need to save it because it was just... Uh, tutorial and uh, there you have it that was the tutorial for game dev studios it's very uh text oriented when it comes to all of this we don't actually get to see any type of visual for the game which we created i would have liked to have seen something you know just like a little something a little animation or whatever it is not being able to like play a game within a game type situation which would be cool if that was possible to do if they really liked walked you through doing a game developing thing so where you're like you're hiring the people to do the certain stuff and then after they're done you're testing a game in which they developed based on your choices and everything like that and you get like a little demo inside of the game that would that would be pretty neat I do like the pixel graphics. There's nothing a whole lot of wrong with the pixel graphics. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the game. It's not like it's a terrible, terrible game. In ways of uh, simulation games go, it's very kind of bare bones in a simulation aspect because it's really all text-based. Like, if you think of games like uh, PC... Is it PC Repair Simulator? Or Build a PC? It's a simulation game we played on New Year New Game, where you go in and you walk through the steps of like building a PC. It gave you every little bit of steps that you're supposed to do. The troubleshooting gave you like a little fake uh, desktop to go in to like run scans and things like that. And it really gave you a feel of what it was like to build a PC. This doesn't feel like it gives me a feel of running a company. I feel like that there's more to it than what is offered here. But giving the the scale of it and it being from a small game studio for what it is, it is a good game. It's a very bare bones kind of run of a game studio and gives you kind of just like text outcomes and I guess probabilities. I, don't know, I think the outcome and probability is actually determined by how you make it. And then, of course, as it said there at the end, uh, the skills of your developers and things like that as well. And 
you know as it progresses maybe we just get better games but if our game studio has such a bad rep people aren't going to want to buy our games to begin with like oh no their first game they put out was terrible i'm not hopeful for their second game uh so you know, maybe they won't buy it but who knows how these ais in this game think maybe they're not as picky as regular people maybe they're willing to give us a second chance anyways uh would i play this game again probably not on, on all honesty i probably won't uh, just because everything's just really text-based and there's not a whole lot of hands-on interaction with the exception of like selecting and picking and naming things and stuff like that. I like games where you are actually really doing something as opposed to just kind of like reading text and clicking confirm or like making a little checklist type thing and then sending it off to just kind of auto run there's the management aspect of hiring and firing developers and then a money management aspect as well uh, that'd be something cool too if they dive deeper into uh, finding sponsors or uh, investors that's the word i was looking for if you went into like a, a thing of finding investors we saw a thing for conventions and going to game conventions and stuff like that but it's not like it would actually take us to a game convention it would, again, probably just be another dialogue of text with choices to make and seeing what the outcome is after we make those choices. So, eh. <laughs> Anyways, that's just my opinion. You can let me know what you think in the comments section down below. I don't say that enough at the end of my videos, and I really should. Uh, I don't know if you really all need permission to use the comment section you're your own people you can go down there and choose to do that are you afraid of like if i'm gonna respond like what i'm gonna say i'm gonna blast you on the next video i'm gonna pull your comment up i'm gonna single you out and just put it up there and just be like look at this person over here with their opinion terrible <laughs> i mean that's what the comment section below is for for me i mean for you guys to do that to me do you hear his opinion in this this time stamp that i put on the comment who makes an opinion like that that's gross <laughs> anyways that is gonna do it for me thank you all for watching and i'll see you in the next game goodbye